Hello everyone, this is Ilker Boss. In this presentation, I'm gonna go over the standard method of test for resistance of compacted asphalt mixtures to moisture induced damage, also known as the moisture damage test or TSR test as performed in accordance with ASHTO T283. This is a test method required by V.spec211 to evaluate the resistance of compacted asphalt mixtures to moisture induced damage. This method covers preparation of specimens and the measurement of, of the change of indirect tensile strength resulting from the effects of water saturation and accelerated water conditioning with a freestow cycle of compacted asphalt mixtures. The results from this test can be used to predict long-term stripping susceptibility of the asphalt mixture and evaluate li liquid anti-stripping additives that are added to fine uh, added to asphalt binder or fine materials such as hydrated lime or Portland cement, which are added to mineral aggregate. As just indicated, this, te this test method is intended to evaluate the effects of saturation and accelerated water conditioning with a free store cycle of compacted asphalt mixtures. This test method is a required test method by VDOT during mixed design submetal and during the first production lot for all VDOT mixes to include rollover and BMD mixes as per VDOT spec 211. Please also note that VDOT spec requires addition of anise stripping agent into asphalt mixtures. This slide shows the apparatus needed to perform this test as per ASH to T283 standard. Please check this standard for further details on the requirements of testing apparatus. The loading equipment used for the IDT cracking test can be used for this test as well or vice versa. However, one important note to add about the loading fixture is that uh, VDOT spec 211 gives the option to use either 100 millimeter or 150 millimeter diameter specimens to perform the moisture damage test. On the other hand, VDOT BMD spec requires 150 millimeter diameter specimens to be tested for the IDT cracking test. So if you have a loading frame with an, with, with an external loading strip like the one shown in this slide, then the loading strip will change depending on specimen diameter you use. For example, if you, if you would like to test a 150 millimeter diameter specimen, then the loading strip should be about 19.05 millimeter wide. Incorrect use of loading strip will result in incorrect test results. This method can be used to test asphalt mixtures in conjunction with mixture design testing, lab mix, lab compacted, asphalt mixture produced at mixing plants, field mix, lab compacted, and asphalt mixture cores obtained from completed pavements of any age, field mix, field compacted. Please note that testing field cores are not part of VDOT spec requirements. As per VDOT spec 211, specimens for this test shall be compacted to 7 plus minus 0.5% airway content with a height of 63.5 plus minus 2.5 millimeter and a diameter of 100 millimeter if specimens are compacted using Marshall hammer. If super paved gyratory compactor is used, then a specimen height of 88.9 plus minus 5.1 millimeter and a diameter of 100 millimeter is required for this test. Specimen preparation and conditioning procedures. At least six specimens need to be prepared for this test, half to be tested dry and the other half to be tested after going through vacuum saturation and moisture conditioning with a free stall cycle. For lab mix, lab compacted specimen, loose mixture shall be conditioned for two hours plus minus 10 minutes at the design compaction temperature prior to compacting. Once the conditioning is done, compact the specimens to seven plus minus 0.5% air void content and specimen size requirements that depends on the compactor type you use, whether Marshall or super paved compactor. For field mix lab compacted specimens, loose mixture shall be brought to the compaction temperature and compacted to seven plus minus 0.5% air void content 
and specimen size requirements that, again, depends on the compactor type you use. Please note that V.spec 211 waives the curing requirements given in Ashton T283 standard. Once specimens are made and cooled down, determine the airway content of the specimens following Ashto T269. Then separate the specimens into two subsets that the average airway content of the subsets are approximately equal. Once specimens are grouped, condition one of the subsets following the procedure in Ashto T283 which will include vacuum saturation of the specimens to a saturation level between 70 and 80%. Once the saturation is done, specimens are subjected to a freeze, freeze cycle at minus 18 plus minus three degrees C for a minimum of 16 hours. Once the freezing cycle is done, subject specimens to a towing cycle in a water bath at 60 plus minus one degree C for 20 hours plus minus one hour. When the free stall cycle is completed for both sets, dry and conditioned sets, place the specimens in a 25 plus minus 0 0.5 degree C water bath for two hours plus minus 10 minutes. Note that specimen needed to be submerged under water with a minimum 25 millimeter of water above their surface. Once, once conditioning at the test temperature of 25C is done, specimens can be tested under the indirect tensile mode with a loading rate of 50 millimeter per minute. Please note that the IDT testing procedure is the same for the moisture damage test and the cracking test. However, since the peak load is the point of interest in the moisture damage test, the load does not have to drop below 0.1 kN or less like the cracking test. Typically, if the load is dropped to 80% of its peak load, the test can be terminated, but there is no harm if, the, if it is led to drop to 0.1 kN or less if you would like to use one setting for both tests. In addition, the data quality checks for the IDT cracking test can apply for the moisture damage test. Since the peak load is the only parameter used from the load displacement curve for the moisture damage test, the most important point to check for the data quality would be that the loading RAM and LVDT readings are synchronized. Calculating the strength, once the test is performed in accordance with the standard, the tensile strength for the dry and conditioned sets can be calculated using the equation shown in this slide, depending on the system of measurement you use. P is the peak load from the load displacement curve. T is specimen thickness or height. D is specimen diameter. Once the average tensile strength for the dry and conditioned sets is calculated, we would be calculating the tensile strength ratio or TSR, which is the ratio of the average tensile strength of the condition set to the average tensile strength of the dry set. We that spec requires to retain at least 80% or more TSR value for asphalt mixtures to be resistance, resistant to moisture induced damage. If the TSR ratio is less than 80%, that means the mixture is moisture susceptible and fails to meet V.spec criteria. If the TSR ratio is 80% or more, that means the mixture is moisture damage resistant and passes the V.spec criteria. No precision estimates and statements are provided or developed for this test yet. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them through the Q&A box or ask them during the Q&A session or email them to me at ilker.buzz at v.virginia.gov. Thank you.